There has been a lot of talk in South Korea lately about the high appearance fees of top actors, and it looks like things will drastically change very soon. In the past, K-dramas were usually produced with a limited budget by the television channels themselves until the 2000s, when they started to be outsourced to independent companies with larger budgets. Starting in the 2010s, K-dramas began to become more popular all over the world. With this rise in popularity and the strong competition between companies, the production costs of dramas increased a lot. Various factors impacted these costs, most notably the arrival in the Korean market of global streaming companies with huge budgets, such as Netflix. However, one of the main issues is the rising costs of hiring top actors, who themselves are now often stars famous all over the world. A large portion of the production budget of every drama is in fact needed to pay the actors. Already in 2013, casting fees in K-dramas took up from 55 to 65 percent of the total budget, compared to 20 or 30 percent in Japan and 10 percent in the U.S. Many industry insiders were already complaining and protesting about this back then, as some companies even went bankrupt because of these high costs and others struggled to pay their staff members. Now, things only got worse over time. Many dramas rely on popular actors to get more attention from viewers and sponsors, but top stars are often demanding appearance fees that are way too high. This causes a rise in production costs, which companies often can't afford. As a result, they are forced to produce less dramas or reduce the salary of their staff members. Industry insiders and representatives from production companies and TV platforms met this past January to discuss the issue, which is hurting the entire world of entertainment in South Korea. They claimed that the rising appearance fees of top top actors is one of the main reasons behind the crisis, and they are discussing plans to solve the issue quickly. After the meeting, a representative from a broadcasting company said, lead actors are now demanding exorbitant fees, and with reduced scheduling, production companies find themselves compelled to pay hundreds of millions of won per episode to secure actors. Also, the demands of top actors go beyond an excessive appearance fee, as they sometimes even try to influence the production of the drama they are starring in. A production company representative revealed, some star actors pre-select broadcasting platforms before signing contracts, frequently changing scripts on set, and even replacing directors. Many industry insiders are blaming online streaming services like Netflix for these issues. A production company representative explained that many actors expect small domestic agencies to pay them as much as globally renowned companies, adding that when actors star in dramas made for online streaming services, they might get paid double or triple the amount paid by Korean companies who simply don't have a budget for that. The representative also said that often domestic companies are forced to comply with the high fee demands of star actors. Otherwise, they would lose sponsors, licensing fees, and viewers. In the span of a few years, the production cost of a single episode of a K-drama has risen from around $500,000 to $2 million. And this is just for one episode. The appearance fees of top actors take up a huge portion of these costs, as some are now paid up to almost $700,000 per episode. Recently, actor Kim Soo Hyun made headlines when it was reported that he was earning around $600,000 per episode with his role in Queen of Tears. The series has 16 episodes in total, which means that the actor would earn around $9.6 million just with this drama. What's even more shocking is that the entire production budget for Queen of Tears is about $29.9 million, meaning that almost one-third of this budget is needed just to pay the appearance fee of Soo Hyun. With the remaining $20 million, the company has to pay the other actors, including the female lead Kim Ji Won and all the staff members in addition to paying for the production costs of the series. This news was denied by the team behind Queen of Tears, and they said that the actor voluntarily reduced his appearance fee for this drama. Apparently, Soo Hyun himself was worried of the rising costs of the series, which were also acknowledged by the production team. Later, it was reported that Soo Hyun's compensation for his role in Queen of Tears is actually lower than what he earned with his previous project, One ordinary day when he got paid $373,000 per episode. Soo Hyun's case is just the last in a long series of controversial news about the compensation received by famous actors. Another heated debate surrounds the huge pay gap between top stars and actors in supporting roles. At the end of 2023, it was reported that there was a huge disparity in the salary of actors in the drama Payback Money and Power. While the lead actor, Lee Sun Kyun, earned $150,000 per episode, the supporting cast was paid just about $75. And similar cases have been since reported 
recorded for several other dramas, such as One Dollar Lawyer and The Golden Spoon, with the top stars being paid hundreds or thousands of times more than the supporting cast. Some have argued that the amount of work and the brand recognition of top stars is enough to justify this difference, but a report actually analyzed the working hours of actors and found out that often the supporting cast is paid well below the minimum wage, without even accounting for additional expenses they might have. It has been suggested that the problem lies in the fact that actors in South Korea are paid per episode, while other countries typically pay based on filming time. Now, many are asking for the introduction of a minimum appearance fee to solve the issue of unfair payment. Netflix is again being blamed for making this issue worse. The streaming service was already at the center of a controversy over their low compensations for supporting actors in the US when it was revealed that they were doing the same in South Korea. Over the past few years, Netflix has enjoyed a massive success thanks to some K-dramas they produced, most notably Squid Game, and has given huge amounts of money to top stars. However, supporting actors are being paid at best just a few hundred dollars per episode. When American actors went on strike in 2023, many Korean actors decided to join the fight and asked Netflix to give something back to the Korean entertainment industry from which they benefited so much. Also, many are complaining about Netflix using AI in some K-dramas, which is hurting less famous actors even more. However, Netflix has refused to meet with Korean unions and decided not to address the issues, so it looks like these problems won't be solved soon. Another issue that has caused much discussion recently is another kind of disparity in compensation, this time between actors in South Korea and in Japan. It has been reported that while Korean actors are paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, Japanese actors receive just a small fraction of that amount in their country. Even popular Japanese actors starring for major broadcasters such as Oguri Shun, Aragaki Yui, and Suda Masaki, only earned around $3,500, $2,000, and $1,500 per episode, respectively. Many Koreans have made posts about this and complained that South Korea pays their actors at the level of top Hollywood stars, while the staff members struggle with a small wage and are often also treated badly by the actors. Many netizens said that the compensation for actors in Japan is actually fair, and that South Korea should adopt the Japanese system and pay their top actors much less. At the end of the day, South Korea is not even close to the size of Hollywood, so to pay the actors so much seems ridiculous to Korean netizens. Because of the high cost of hiring famous stars, many production companies are now resorting to new young actors for their dramas. This works especially well in dramas set in schools, as they need young people to act as students. A few of these school dramas, like All of Us Are Dead, included a cast of newcomers and no famous names, but still gained attention worldwide. Also, star actors often prefer to appear in dramas in which they can be at the center of attention and avoid school dramas, where the focus is on a group of people rather than a single character. This gives a great opportunity to young actors who can get noticed even in supporting roles. Another recent success is Pyramid Game, which included an established star like Kim ji Yeon as the main character, while the other students of the school were portrayed by newcomers. The production team of this drama was able to use a famous name to gain the attention of fans, but also managed to reduce costs using new actors. This system has now set an example that many production companies will surely follow. Hiring newcomers also helps the entertainment industry. If production companies always cast top stars, new actors will never gain recognition and the crisis will only get worse. Meanwhile, smaller companies are struggling as they can't afford to hire famous actors. As a result, their dramas don't get the attention of fans and sponsors and they end up losing money. Less famous actors and staff members working for small, independent companies often don't see their salaries for months, as most of the production budget goes to a few leading actors. Also, companies hire less staff members to save money and give them temporary contracts with low salaries and bad working conditions. These controversies on overpaid actors have been going on for many years, with many people online complaining about the issue, which is part of a larger problem about wealth inequality in South Korea. Now, it looks like industry insiders are understanding that the current system isn't sustainable and a real change is needed. Some have suggested the introduction of a regulation that sets how much of the production budget has to go to the actors, like in other countries. Others are asking that the actors get paid based on production time, rather than by episode, and that staff members are given better contracts and working conditions. It remains to be seen if lawmakers in South Korea will be able to introduce these much-needed changes.